Barbara, you just wrote a new book. I did. It's called Holy Envy. It is. What is that? <laughs> Tell uh, me. That is the story of teaching world religions at a rural college in Northeast Georgia uh, for 20 years, which means through many presidents and many international conflicts and trying as a Christian to do that in a way that inspired perhaps envy instead of fear of people who were not like the students I taught. And I think it worked for the most part. This before seminary? After seminary? Um, the, the class I have taught, I just retired from that job two years ago. Wow. And, uh, so I did that for 20 years, and that was post-seminary and post-congregational ministry yeah. and into a college teaching job. Because you walked out of that congregational ministry thing. Yeah, I just remember six, that six, miles, six miles just up like the six road miles up the to road. the college. That's right. I followed <laughs> yeah. the, the trailer full of furniture. How do you have the courage to go out and be you? What makes you able to leave a thing, <laughs> okay, and do um, a new thing? Well, we could talk about it in mentally ill ways or healthy ways. Well, let's pick one. Okay, well, the, the mentally ill way would be that I flee competence. As soon as okay. I get good at something, I leave and go do something else yeah. because the standards are too high when you're competent. Ooh. But the more healthy way would be to say um, that I'm a learner. And when I've learned as much as I think I can learn about something, it's time to go be a beginner at something else and go learn about that instead. So I was listening to you today. Yes. You were talking yes. and I was talking, but I heard my dad and then I heard marijuana, uh -huh. and then I heard sex. <laughs> what did your parenting, what did your growing up give you in terms of both that competent yes. leave thing and also I'll go? What did you get? Uh, I grew up with a, a parents who were experimenting with the freedoms of the late 60s and 70s, mm -hmm. and also with the cultural disruption of those times, mm. with a lot of assassinations and war. Um, and, and upset, so they sort of led me into that because I was their first child, which means I was very obedient, the eldest oh, yeah. daughter. Um, so I um, got a lot of encouragement and perhaps too much encouragement from my father to enjoy the liberties of living in the late 60s oh and early 70s. Yeah. So yeah. he was the first one who yeah. offered me marijuana and said I should try it. Did you like it? Um, not much because yeah. I liked being in control yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, and I just ended up laughing inappropriately for a long time when I smoked marijuana. And I did inhale, I did. The first time I smoked marijuana uh, and I did inhale was almost my last, so uh, twice. Uh, I did not like being high. No. I think I wake up kind of high. Yeah. And I think to add that wake up high on the other high, I was insane. That's I, brilliant. I did not enjoy it. I'm borrowing your answer the next time <laughs> I'm asked. Right, right. That's wonderful. So we're living in a world that is kind of on fire. Yeah. Um, what I might call a hot mess time, mm -hmm. where interreligious fighting and even those of us who are Christians are not able to say, here's what we think, here's what we believe, and we are not building an interfaith global community. Mm -hmm. And then your book, Mm -hmm. is arguing there is something to get from these mm -hmm. religions. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about the religions and justice? What, what could we get from religions to make us make a more just society? Two answers to that. Um, one is I don't like saying all religions are alike because they're not. They're not. But it's hard to find one that doesn't have it, its core, that the best way to get over yourself is to see in the neighbor um, the mm -hmm. face of the sacred. And if yeah. you're in a tradition that doesn't speak of the sacred, still to see in your neighbor the yeah. best opportunity you have for waking up, right. for becoming more awake. Sure. Um, so there's that that mm -hmm. we can get from religions, is that we seem to have that in common when we don't have a lot other in common, that, right. that how I treat you is, is primally important. Right. Now, within the traditions, there's a lot going on, but it's at the edges of the tradition. So there are Christians at the edges of theirs, meeting with people of other faiths right. and no faiths at the edges of theirs. And what's exciting about that to me is there's human connection right. and connections around values yeah. that are as important as religious alliances for a lot of people. So that offers great promise, not that they'll lessen their religious commitments, but right. they will see how their religions serve these relationships with people across yeah. previously obeyed boundaries. I love that. I love the way you said that. And yeah. my mind goes to Women's March, for example, uh -huh. and just thinking about Linda Sarsour, who's mm -hmm. Miss Palestinian Justice Muslim, uh -huh. and, Lin and Sharon Browse, mm -hmm. who's Miss 
rabbi, mm -hmm. justice woman, and how uh, yeah. when I'm with the two of them uh -huh. or some of our other colleagues that are Christian and Muslim and Jewish, we are not trying to convert each other. We are not letting go of our own faith, but we are actually creating some narrative together, some mm -hmm. story together, some history together, mm -hmm. and context, and saying we're going to point our love mm -hmm. toward making a better world. That seems this is good, right? It is, and when I tell Christians who are worried about the the you know being part of God's good news for the world, what if God's good news for the world is God intends to heal the world and will take any partners who are willing, you know, and wishes they would get together instead of you know, warring with each other about the right way to do that. So I think there's even a way with pretty traditional Christians to tweak your idea of what it means to be a missionary. You know, yeah. what if God's mission is to heal? Right. Um, and we'll take, again, any willing partners. We'll take anybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll I will deputize you. <laughs> I will deputize you, yeah. agnostic, atheist, Whoever Buddhist, you yoga are. doing. I've got I like work that for vision you to of do. God. Yeah. Could you describe God for me in three more words? I won't be able to do that because mm -hmm. I find words fail more and oh, more. I like yeah. a lot of people was brought up with the old white guy, you oh. know, with a hair, a lot of hair. Do you have a lot of beard? Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, on a cloud, <laughs> with angels with harps behind him, and and more and more, you know, that has seems that that's long ago, completely inadequate. Um, but God begins to seem to me more like connective consciousness, and mm. I don't mean to disembody God because no, I'm good. Christian enough to think bodies yeah. count like right. for everything, right. but. Um, but I do get the sense that God is not embodied, you know, in the way I am, but is very much what is between and Ooh, connecting all good. of our bodies and mm -hmm. and in, informing everything that happens. God's in the liminal? God's was, in the ligaments? Yeah, way more. Oh, that's good. I like that. that. Good. God is in the ligaments. God is in the ligaments. Because doesn't really... There you go. Come ligaments. on now. <laughs> right, right there. That's right. right. God is in between yeah. in the ligaments. I think that could preach. Yeah, I think, I think so that too. could preach. Um, <laughs> one more. Mm -hmm. I'm dreaming of. What are you dreaming of for America, Barbara? Oh, I'm dreaming small scale because I live in rural America. Yeah. And it seems to me, oddly, I'm living with more diversity of every kind. Well, political diversity and economic and educational diversity in mm -hmm. the country than I ever did in the city. Because wow. in the city, really? I could silo. I could oh, just be with my yeah. own folks, go okay. to the church I liked. And in the country, you can't do that. You're huh. going to buy your feed from somebody who's, you know, voting for. Some, I mean, at I any rate, you. I've got small scale in mind, which right. is neighborliness across neighborhood divides. And I'm leaving the really large global things to people like you. I'm so sorry That's okay. to be doing that. I'm happy to split that dream thing with you. Yep. So you're going to do the local dream. I'm going to carry that neighborliness. Corner. Say it again. Yeah. It's beautiful. Neighborliness at the local level seems yeah. the place that I'm well planted to do. You know, whether that's trying to get a group together to pick up trash by the side of the road, though we can't cancel each other's votes out and don't agree on guns, uh, but just finding things we can do together that we enjoy doing together and to try to resist the temptation to demonize each oh, other because we're God. different. And where I am, you know, the difference will look different than it does to you in New York City, but it's hmm. still worth um, trying some things out that would get us talking. Neighborliness, locally, globally, nationally. Mm -hmm. Won't you be my neighbor? Yes, I will. I will. I just need a sweater first. So. <laughs> and a cup of hot chocolate. That's right. Can I give you a hug? Uh -huh. Thank you. I do love you.